Over the past few years, AI has transformed coding. For example, according to the Coinbase CEO, more than 40% of code in their company is now written by AI. And this AI revolution has allowed us developers to create new software faster than ever in human history. But with this AI revolution has also come a big problem that is now starting to become apparent. There are countless examples online of people who vibe code applications that they release to real people which are entirely built using AI. And while AI allows these people to create these applications and start up much much faster than ever, eventually a lot of them end up in big problems as they realize that they've relied way too much on AI generated code without properly understanding and reviewing the code that AI generates. This is because while AI can be right 95% of the time, it still leaves security holes, allowing users to exploit your software. It does not always write code efficiently, causing you to spend more money than you need to on server resources. It writes redundant and unnecessary code, bloating your code base. And also, of course, it leaves in bugs which slip through the cracks if you do not review the AI's code properly, which let's be honest, most of us don't. Because the truth is, most of us developers are too lazy to properly review the code. I can say from personal experience, I have made these mistakes. I have made some changes in my startup with AI generated code. It seems fine on the surface, but the next day I find out that I have 10 users messaging me that some other part of the application is not working. That was actually affected by the change that I made in a different part of my application without me even thinking to consider it. And the thing is most AI tools themselves are way too generic to actually help with this. They leave very vague and generic comments, they miss important patterns, and they don't reflect how your team or yourself actually build your software. So this is a problem, but in this video I'm going to give you the solution that I have been using to get around this issue when coding my own projects. And the solution is a platform called Bass, which is an AI code reviewer. What Bass has built is a dedicated set of AI code review agents that review like real great software engineers. Bass memorizes your coding standards and transforms them into code review to get developers unstuck when waiting for reviews. And Bass actually understands software architecture, past conventions that you've used inside of your projects, and how these systems actually behave in production. So they will find bugs and issues that even humans might miss. All you have to do is connect your GitHub or GitLab account, and now any pull request that you make will be automatically reviewed by Baz's fleet of AI code review agents, all of which are configured to review different aspects of your code, from bugs to naming patterns, code hygiene, and much more. So they did sponsor this video, but I think this is such a must use for any developer these days that uses AI on a regular basis to generate code that I really wanted to make this video. So you can get started with Bass from my link down below in the description. Once you arrive, you can see that you'll be able to start your free 14 day trial. You're going to be simply asked to create an account by logging into either GitHub or GitLab, whichever one you use. So I use GitHub. So I'm going to click continue with GitHub. So I've already obviously connected this to my GitHub account, but for you here, you would just click to approve for them to connect to your GitHub account and you're going to get to the Baz interface. And the best part here is that most of what you're going to be doing with the software actually happens automatically in the background because most of what we're going to be looking at actually happens directly inside of GitHub or GitLab inside of your pull request. So to show you how Baz's AI code review works, I've now got here my code base where I have made some changes and I'm going to make a pull request like I would at any other time. Now I'm going to go to GitHub into my repository. And I'm going to see obviously here that we can make a pull request over here. And I'm going to do that. Now what is going to happen because Bass is now connected to my GitHub it's going to start reviewing these changes on the background automatically. So it's going to take a couple of seconds usually. So you're going to refresh this and now we can see that Bass has reacted to my pull request. So with that, we know that now Bass is actually reviewing this code in the background and we keep refreshing eventually we will see that Bass Reviewer has now approved these changes. So in this particular case, the Bass AI Reviewer actually didn't have any changes 
to make. So because there were no changes here, I'm gonna show you an example of a previous pull request. I've got a couple here just to show you how this works. For example, this one, I made some changes in here. So the first thing where it actually had some comments. So the first thing that will happen is that Baz will automatically generate a description of your pull request, which straight away just saves so much time that you don't have to do this yourself, which is gonna be super useful for any other developers in your team. And it's gonna reference the files and it's also gonna create this diagram of the changes that were made that can be very useful in many different cases. And what happened here is that as we can see, Bass Reviewer reviewed this 44 minutes ago and he left these comments. So here it is saying, should data dot data.chat.id be data.chat.id. The create chat API endpoint structure suggests that chat ID is directly on the data object. And based on my understanding of the code base, this is actually correct. I, or the AI that actually wrote this code made a mistake. They were accidentally referencing data.data.chat.id when it should be data.chat.id. And this is very easy for even a human to miss. If you just quickly go through the code, you see like, okay, that looks good. But AI was actually able to find this mistake, which even me as a human completely missed. So in this case, I'm gonna click here to commit these changes. And now these changes are going to be combined into this pull request and I can merge it over here. And the way this works behind the scenes is that Baz has several different agents that all go through the changes in your pull request, sort of looking out for different types of things. So in this particular example over here, we saw that this finding was of type logical bugs. And over here, when you go into Baz.co and inside of your dashboard and you click here on Baz agents, you'll be able to see all the different kinds of agents that actually went through this code. And this particular change or mistake was found by this agent here, which looks out specifically for logical bugs. We can see identifies logical inconsistencies, flawed conditionals, edge cases that could lead to unexpected behavior. And also at any time, you can also click directly here on changes to view all of the pull requests that have been reviewed by Baz. Now to show you some other examples of what these Baz agents can do. I have here a different repository where I have an open pull request where this description again generated by Baz tells me that this essentially is refactoring the application's backend structure, which is exactly what I was doing. So it has realized that. And again, we have a comment here where it is saying, would data or prompts be a better fit than upload data for this post endpoint? And it's referencing the fact that RESTful APIs typically use nouns for resource paths. So this was not a bug, it was just a naming convention that this particular reviewer, which is looking out for REST API best practices, told me. And now what I can do, if I agree with it, I can just commit it like I did before. Or if I don't agree with it, I can also give it a comment. I can, for example, if in this case, I actually do think that upload data is how I want this API to be called. I can just tell it, I prefer to keep it upload data. Then I can commit that. And then this comment is gonna be sent to the Baz review. So in the future, it's kind of gonna remember this. And in any future changes, it's gonna know that, okay, we don't want to change this. So this was for REST API best practices. So the particular agent that found this was this agent right here. Now looking at what else it was able to do. So here it found an issue of type code hygiene. So here, here it finds this commented out function over here and it's suggesting to me, should this commented out database save call be implemented or removed? It suggests functionality that isn't actually working. And then we have a couple more over here. Here is a logical bug. Again, it is telling me that the assistant ID, uh, this one and this one looks like placeholders. This would cause runtime errors when the endpoints are called. So I actually realizes that in this particular example, we have forgot to replace these placeholders with actual names. Then we got more stuff in here. The endpoint returns success without processing the messages. This could mislead clients about the actual operation status. Yes, that sounds great. And again, that is a logical bug and we've got even more over here which we could go through but that gives you the idea of what is actually happening here. So that is the basics of Baz and this is really all you have to do. You just have to install it and all of this is going to happen in the background automatically. Now to show you some other additional features that you can supercharge the way in which Baz actually reviews your code. Now the first thing you can actually do is that while by default, Baz has created these review agents in here that look for again, all these different things. You can actually create your own review agents by clicking on custom agents 
over here. For example, I might want to create a debugger logger where what it will do is add console logs for debugging inside all endpoints in the server. What you're seeing here is Bass's reviewer playground that essentially allows you to test a custom reviewer before you actually put it live and tell it to review all incoming pull requests. So I'm gonna select one previous pull request from here for testing purposes. For example, this refactor one, and then I'm going to run it. And over here, we can see that if you had reviewed this particular pull request, it would have made these two comments here, where it's asking, would it be helpful to add a console log at the start of each endpoint for easier debugging? This is exactly what I wanted it to do, and this one as well. So this bot appears to be working as intended. So now I can click here on save and activate reviewer. And now every time in the future, I push an EPR on top of all of these other BAS agents, my custom agent will now also review my PR. And at any time, if there's any of these agents that you don't want to be reviewing your PRs, you can simply click, click on here and click remove. And now this agent will be removed. And if you want to modify how these reviewers work, you can click here on settings and configuration. And there are all kinds of different settings that you can set based on your preferences. For example, if you want to add a approved label to any change request, if there are no changes found, like in the first example I showed you, you can take that. Uh, by default, it is going to auto approve a change request if there are no issues. You can also toggle that off if you want to. And rather than reviewing all pull requests automatically, you can also set it so that it only does that on demand if you only want to do it when requested rather than automatically for every pull request. And there's bunch of other settings, which you can now go through here. It's just good to be aware that this is available here. And then they also have integrations. Obviously I already integrated my GitHub, but there's many others in here. For example, you can connect your Slack, which actually allows Bass to notify yourself when there are new comments or some pull requests has been reviewed and a bunch of other things. And there's also other integrations, which I'm sure they're adding more of them constantly. So you can integrate it to whatever tools you happen to be using. Then over here, here on insights, if you click on evaluation, you will also be able to look at some statistics on what proportion, for example, of the changes that were suggested by bad agents have been rejected. For me, it's 14.29%. It, it tells you the amount of PRs that have been reviewed as accepted suggestions. And then over here, you can look at how many of different types of changes from these different agents have been accepted and unaddressed. And also at any time, obviously, you can look at the list of all of the changes and the pull requests that have been reviewed by bad agents over here on changes. Now, let's say you're like me, where a lot of the time you work on your own and you don't even necessarily make pull requests. Well, with Bass, what you can actually do is integrate these AR reviewers directly into your code editor as well. And this happens through Bass's own MCP server. So on their docs here, they have instructions on how to install it on all kinds of different code editors. For example, for cursor, you can just go here and click add to cursor in here or do it manually with this file in here. So when we go to cursor, for example, and we click here on settings, and then we go to MCP and integrations, we can see here that we've got Bass integrated directly into my code editor. And then simply anytime from this chat window, if you wanted to review some changes, you can just tell it, review these changes according to my org's best practices. And what it will do is call Baz's AI agents. We can see here that it called organizational review guidelines. And you can actually get your code reviews by Baz's agents directly inside of your code editor, even before making the pull request. And this works in pretty much any major code editor that you might be using, like Cursor, VS Code, Windsurf, etc. AI can be a force for good and a force for bad when it comes to software development. If you use it carefully and correctly, it can help you build amazing things. But without properly reviewing your AI generated code, you can also end up with a lot of bad code and even big security holes inside of your applications if you are not careful. So I hope that this video showed you how effective and also hands off using AI code reviewers by Bath can be. And because it is so hand off and it just kind of happens in the background, it's almost a no brainer for any developer to use this in my opinion, because it kind of allows you to get the upside of AI of being able to develop faster without a lot of the downside, because these AI reviewers essentially just act as a backstop that prevents you from shipping bad code. And again, if you're not sure if this is gonna work for you, you can try for 14 days for completely free from my link down below in the description. Let me know what you think and I will see you in the next video.